miraculously, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well with the time. But what I'd like to be able to do is just sort of wrap up a little bit everything that we've heard this morning. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, wrap up a little bit with a couple of comments and observations about some of the, some of the talks we've heard this morning. And I'm going to do it by following the numbers. We've heard a lot of numbers, uh, and which is really quite normal from a data-driven organization like Frontiers. We measure, and we, that generates numbers, and we make, we make informed decisions based on that. Um, and as Chant Chantel pointed out, these numbers speak for themselves. And I'm going to suggest they actually speak very loudly for themselves. And I'm also going to tell you what they're telling us. What, the, what, what these numbers are saying is that open science works. That's, that's what these numbers are telling us. Um, and, and now uh, I'm just going to step back and go through some of these other presentations in terms of the numbers that we've heard. Um, Camila's presentation, four challenges, four challenges to provide the basis for the mission. And 105, 105 is a plan expressed in numbers. I find that really quite, quite beautiful. Well, then we had Miriam. Miriam talked 100,000 editors, and I'd like us all to really just pause for a second and think about what that means. 100,000 people are signed onto Frontier's editorial boards around the world, and this is just an incredible achievement. Um, and Miriam, those bubbles, I love the bubbles, and uh, you, know, you, you see these journals starting as, as molecules, perco percolating molecules, becoming planetary in size, and this is something I think is a reflection of the, f the, f the frontier's achievement. Marie with her benchmarking, I think a 90% satisfaction rate says a thousand words. And, uh, and, and as she says, this is nothing that happens by accident. Um, Danielle, none of this would happen without the AI that is, that is underpinning all of this. And one billion is the number from Ronald's presentation, one billion, the amount spent in Europe on subscriptions each year. So, um, open science works, but, uh, yeah, so, and I just wanted to show this one slide as an emblem. This is an emblem of the international reach of frontiers around the world. We've seen it a couple of times. Really a beautiful, uh, a beautiful view, but all science is not open. And um, confronted with the challenges that Camila mentioned to us, uh, frankly, in this context, patience is not a virtue. It's time to get to action. And I just want to uh, say a few words about my observations from the office visit that we had yesterday. We had people come through the office and systematically, people came out of these discussions and they said, wow, that was amazing. People should know about this. More people should know about this. I had no idea. This was the type of language that came out as people were learning about, about open access, about open science, about Plan S, about the processes at Frontiers. And so we feel it's part of our mission. One thing we can all do together in order to help address these challenges is talk. Let's talk, let's engage, let's let people know that what, what, what the facts are so that they can make the right decisions. And so let's begin with some uh, jumping off on some of the points that Ronald made. Let's talk a little bit about finances. Um, I think Ronald, one of the points he, he really drove forward was the fact that in order to be able to judge value in, in scientific publishing services, we have to know how much it costs first. So let's get that, let's make that transparent so that people can actually start making that calculation in an intelligent way. He's also showed that consortia deals and institutional agreements are very effective in terms of bringing open access to large groups of people, large, large communities of people. I think this is also something that we need to bring back to, the, to, to our communities and our institutions. We have to get people to understand how they can compare value for the money that they're spending on, on, on subscriptions. Because, as Ronald said, there, this illusion that, that publishing services are free is really very, very dangerous in terms of having an intelligent conversation about this. What about Plan S? Ronald said, talked about Plan S. We had a, a session about Plan S yesterday in the office. Plan S is a group of, uh, of funders getting together saying, we want return on investment. We're, we're investing money, we're paying for the research, now we want the best possible return on investment Open access channels provides that, that return on investment. And um, th there, uh, there is a consultation round now going on around Plan S that's going to be published in June. Now is the time to get back. I mean, 
when you go out to conferences, when you go out into faculties, you hear people talking about Plan S all the time. Now is the time to get informed about it and, get, and be part of that discussion. So that's another thing we can do. We can engage about Plan S in our, in our, in our faculties and institutions. Um, now what I'm going to do is, is bore you with just, with just one technical slide. And I hope you forgive me for this, but I'm very, this is something I'm particularly proud of. This frontiers, people often say, what is Frontier's business model? Frontier's business model is based on article publishing charges. It's, it's a publishing as a service, and it's paid for on an article-by-article article basis. Now, if you look at this plot, it's, it's sort of what I, it's what I call my, the rainbow plot of our, of our APCs. You see that there are APCs across five categories. We have an APC that is adequate for each community, for each journal. You know, Miriam showed how the journals go up from... from, from toddler up to leader, and that is something that we can also, we can also engineer by picking the right type of uh, APC, right, the right type of article publishing charge for the articles published in that title. You, the bands all represent the costs that, are, can, that can be attributed to each of these APCs in, in, in for things like IT and innovation, for things like administration, for, th for honoraria, and also for waivers. These are all direct costs that can be attributed to the APCs that we charge. Now, I'm not going to say any more because the, other, the reason I'm putting this up is because this is entirely on our website. We have a very detailed document about exactly how this is, is, is done, and it's transparent and it's available on our website. Um, now, I'd just like to say a few words about societies. Let's talk about societies. Now, societies, uh, they are, every society in the world today is talking about open access. They, they are looking for a partner in transition, as, as, Daniel, as Daniel put it. They're worried about their brand, they're worried about finances, and they're worried about indexation, continuity and indexation. But um, Frontiers is that partner. Fr we can partner with societies and we can get them through. We have, we have very specific solutions for each of these things and we can work with them to get through this. But it's not just about societies. Other organizations, academies, uh, mission-based forums, they also see the interest in working with Frontiers. People that need expertise, that need uh, uh, networks of, of scientists, that, that, that need the technology to inform and make decisions, we can help, we can be a partner. And I just want to point out one project that we're working with the World Economic Forum, Stefan Megenthaler will, will, will talk this later this afternoon, but we're working on a, uh, a project in which we're using our, our, our research topic platform in order to address and identify some of the governance gaps in future, future technologies, in the fourth, tech, the fourth industrial revolution uh, uh, technology. Now, let's also talk about, oh yeah, so this, is the, the, this slide is just to show you the type, of, uh, the type of personalized environment that we can build for our society partners. Now, let's talk about metrics. Uh, Camila showed how metrics can be used to, to make also observations that can guide us in our decisions. It is clear that open access has a citation advantage and that's using, uh, that's using journal, level, journal level metrics. Also, journal level metrics are very important in terms of benchmarking and with partners like Clarivit, they take, very, they take very good care in terms of making sure that real professionals are vetting each title a, a, before they come onto, the, onto, onto their index. There are a number of services out there that provide this type of, uh, of, of, of service. Well, I'm happy to announce that 12 additional titles at Frontiers are going to be added to the, 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 the sci Science Citation Index expanded this summer, 12 new journals with, with impact factors at Frontiers. Um, for assessment of research, of the reach of individual research projects, I think we need to, to step back and we, need to, we need slightly broader uh, um, tools. We need also to dig down and see how articles are doing at an article level. Article level metrics, author level metrics were, were part of the, the package that, run, that Frontiers provided driven by open science principles right from the beginning. And uh, Chantel showed the power of the profiles. The profiles also puts all of this into a really useful context that allows people to very objectively judge the reach of individual research. Now, Let's, to, 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 to end, let's talk about doing the right thing. There is absolutely, if we step back and, and look at the principles, there's absolutely no reason when an article is published that it's not available on the day of publication. There's absolutely no reason that the article is, is, is presented in a way 
that is AI compatible, that allows people to do text and data mining, that makes the article perfectly interoperable. Um, so what can we do to make this happen, to improve the situation? Well, we can all go back to our faculties, our institutes, our colleagues, and we can let them know about one or two things that we've learned uh, this, this, this morning. Um, because I am convinced, and I hope that most of you are convinced too, that there are real benefits for everybody in the, in the research innovation cycle from the open science world. And there are benefits even broader than that. Open science brings science to the children and the families of this world. The preeminent um, the, pre, the, the, pre, the, the, the preeminent program for uh, bringing science to kids is Frontiers for Young Minds. And um, we have, with, with industry support, we're working now quite hard to make sure that the top science is interpreted, delivered to children and families around the world in their mother tongue. So if you, if you play with the app, you'll see it's available in Hebrew. We have other languages on the way. This is the, pre, the preeminent channel for outreach in, uh, in, in open, open science. With that, I, I thank you all very much. And um, I just have, I'm going to step back, take a breath, and <laughs> thanks.